So this is a very interesting question that one of our students asked, right? So he says, uh, he talks about Fisher linear discriminant and he says, what happens to Fisher linear discriminant when the means of both the classes is the same, right? So I'll come to this case and explain how to tackle this case in the context of Fisher linear discriminant. But for those of you who may not know what is Fisher linear discriminant, let me give you a very simple idea here. Again, this is very related to the concept of principal component analysis. So I'm assuming that you have gone through the concept of principal component analysis in our course videos, which is freely available, right? So where I discuss about uh, uh, how to formulate the problem itself, right? So I'm going to assume that. So in PCA, what do we have? We don't have classes. PCA is an unsupervised algorithm, right? Where we are trying to find that hyperplane on which if I project my data, right? I'm going to get maximum variance, right? I'm, I want to preserve as much variance as possible. Again, this is something that we discuss in lots of details, uh, both mathematically and graphically in the course videos. Now, Fisher linear discriminant is an idea that is very similar to PCA, but in the context of classification. So here we have a supervised setting. This is not about dimensionality reduction. PCA is about dimensionality reduction by trying to retain as much variance as possible. Fisher linear discriminant is all about a classification task. So I'll, I'll try to explain this very simply using a two-dimensional example, right? Imagine I have feature one and feature two. Let's assume I have two classes. Let's assume this is class one, all the yellow points, all the green points, let's assume are class two, right? Just like in PCA that we've already discussed in the course videos. Here our objective is very simple. Our objective is, can I come up with a hyperplane? Okay, so objective here is come up with a hyperplane pi with w being the normal to the hyperplane such that when I project these points onto the hyperplane, they're well separated. That's the whole objective. Again, in PCA, our objective is to maximize the projected variance. Here, the objective here is to separate these two classes. Right? So we are given a bunch of points with class labels. Let's assume the class labels are one and two. Now imagine if I project all these points onto this axis or onto this feature, then what happens? All these yellow points will get projected to values from here to here. All these green points will get projected to values from here to here. Again, in our course videos, we discuss about uh, projections, all the basic concepts of linear algebra. So I'm assuming that you've gone through those. Otherwise, you'll not be able to understand what's happening here, right? So when I project all of these yellow points and these green points onto this feature or onto this line, what happens, they're completely overlapping. So I'm not able to separate them, right? So my objective here is to come up with a hyperplane. Imagine if I come up with a hyperplane like this. Okay, I'm just drawing it roughly. This hyperplane passes through origin. So its equation will be W transpose X equals to zero. There is no plus B term, right? Where W is the normal to this hyperplane, right? So let's call this hyperplane as pi. So in the case of a two-dimensional case, all that we are doing is simply a line. Right? So we are coming up with a line here. Now, if I project all of my yellow points onto this plane, right? let's assume this point is xi. How do I project it? I just compute w transpose xi. Right? So let's assume this value is xi dash. Right? So I can compute, I can project these points onto this plane and they will all fall here. There will be a lot of overlap here, but they will all fall here. Right? So I can also project all these green points here. And when I project them onto this hyperplane, they will all fall here. Right? Now, if you notice, all these yellow points, so let me use a different color here, all these yellow points and green points are well separated. So after projecting them onto this hyperplane, I can just use this as a threshold. And whatever is on this side of the threshold are all yellow points. Whatever is there on this side of the green, or whatever is there on this side of this value is all green points. So our objective here is to find this hyperplane pi such that when this data which has two classes is projected, the classes are well separated. That's the problem here, right? Very, very simple. This is very similar from a mathematical viewpoint. This is very similar or from a geometric viewpoint, it's very similar to PCA, but in the context of classification. Now, if you want to look at it mathematically, look at this. These are all your points. Let's assume I'm given a data set, right? Xi, Yi, Xi's are these original points. All these are Xi's and Yi is, let's say, class one and class two. So all these yellow points are class one, all these green points are class two, right? Now, I want to find a hyperplane pi that is passing through origin, okay, which means it only has uh, this w, 
right? What is my objective? Now, given any point xi, as I, as, I, as I just showed earlier, right? Given any point xi, I can compute the projected point using W transpose xi. Let's call those points as xi dash. So whenever I use the dash, it means the projected point. If I don't use it, it means the original points. Okay. So after projecting them, I have this bunch of points. I have this bunch of points, right? And these are one-dimensional points. Remember that these are one-dimensional points on this line, right? So what Fisher linear discriminant says is, I want to find again. This is the optimization problem behind Fisher, discrim Fisher linear discriminant analysis or finding Fisher linear discriminant. It says. I, I have a function like this. I'll explain this function in a couple of minutes, right? So the object again, this is this is uh, we have we have discussed lots of optimization problems in the course videos. So I'm going to give you an intuition of how this how this pans out. So what it says here is the Fisher linear discriminant says is what what the Fisher linear discriminant says is the mean of this of this projected point and the mean of these projected points should be far away. That's that's what we want. We want the means of these projected points, the mean of these projected points. Let's say the mean of these projected points as mu1 dash. Okay, so let's say this is class 1 and this is class 2 because I've used that notation here. Let's say the mean of this is mu2 dash. We want these two means to be as far as possible so that we can separate them better. Right? Which means what do we want? We want mu1 dash minus mu2 dash to be as large as possible. Right? So what do we do in such a case? mu1 dash minus mu2 dash whole square. Why do we have the square term here? Because this could be positive or negative. We want the difference between mu1 and mu2 to be as large as possible. That's why we are just squaring this up. Again, this is to make, account for both positive and negative values. In addition to that, we want these points, we want these points to be grouped very closely together. Similarly, we want these points to be grouped very closely together. See, if these means are far away and if these points are closely packed, then that's the ideal situation. How do I measure if these values are closely packed? I can just compute the variance in all these values. Similarly, I can compute the variance amongst all these values. So what we have here, what do we want? We want this to be large. We want these variances to be small. So what do we want? Look at this. So, okay, we want this gap to be large. So it should not be minima. It should be a maxima problem. I'm sorry. That's a small typo here, right? We want to maximize we want to find a w here that maximizes this function, which is a function of w. Why is it a function of w? Because my this mu1 and mu2, a mu1 dash and mu2 dash can be computed using xi dashes. Xi dash, if I have xi dashes for all the points in class 1 and class 2, this is simply the average, the simple arithmetic mean of these points. Similarly, for your si dash or s1 dash, is nothing but xi dash minus mu1 dash. So how am I computing this si dash for class 1? See, look at this. S1 dash is the variance. Okay, this is this is this is very similar to a variance, except except for the averaging term 1 by n here. Right? So we don't have the averaging term. This is basically a measure of spread. How spread are the points in class 1? How spread are the points in class 2? We want this spread to be small. Similarly, we want this spread to be small. That's why we have put this in the denominator as we've as we've explained in the course videos. If these values are small, this whole, because this, this, this is the denominator, this whole expression, this whole expression will be large and we want this to be large. So the optimization problem we are solving in the context of Fisher linear discriminant is we want to maximize the difference between projected means and we want to minimize the variance, the in-class variance. This is this is the variance of projected points in class 1. This is the variance of projected points in class 2. So within class variance of projected points, we want them to be as small as possible. This is the optimization problem, right? Again, there are some very simple and elegant ways to solve this. I'm not going to go into that, right? Now, again, very simple, very ingenious, very easy to understand if you already know PCA, if you know the concepts of linear algebra. Now, now comes the interesting part. Now, the case that our student asked was, what if mu1 and mu2 are same? Again, there are many ways that mu1 and mu2 can be same. This is one example. Look at this. These are all my class 2 points. These are all my class 1 points. Let's assume this is class 1 and this is class 2. The mean of all the points of class 2 is here. The mean of all the points in class 1 is here. Right? So, how does Fisher linear discriminant work in this case? If mu1 equals to mu2, any vector multiplied by mu1 and any vector multiplied by mu2 is also same which implies 
mu1 dash equals to mu2 dash for any vector for all w right for any w see these two are the same so if i do a dot product with a vector w i'll get the same result which means in this optimization problem my mu1 and mu2 are the same which means this whole value will become zero look at this this value becomes zero and we know that these variances because they are squares they are always positive zero divided by a positive number it's always zero right so there is no way i can perform the optimization i can perf i can solve this optimization problem because mu1 dash minus mu2 dash is zero so in such a case linear discriminant does not work well so how do we get around this problem there are a bunch of options one you can change the features instead of using feature one and feature two come up with better features where the means are different right so that like this look at this in this case the means are different so the so i'm able to find a hyperplane or i'm able to find a line wherein if i project this i'm able to separate these two classes right this is this is one option second option here is why are you stuck to linear discriminant analysis or official linear discriminant analysis use non linear models like decision trees if i have a decision tree what can i do i can classify all these points as one class i can classify all these points as one class i can classify all these points as one class i can classify all these points as one class in between i may make mistakes that's okay a simple decision tree can can do a pretty good job here or the third option is to transform features let, let me give you an example imagine this is how my data looks like again in this case these are one class of points this is the other class of points where is the mean of all these yellow points here is the mean of all the yellow points where is the mean of all the green points it's also here so even in this case mu1 equals to mu2 like there are many ways mu1 can be equal to mu2 this is one such case in this case if you perform linear discriminant analysis or official linear discriminant analysis it won't work well but i can transform these features as i've already discussed in the course videos what i can do here is instead of using feature 1 feature 2 i can construct a new feature called radius which is basically the distance from this centroid or the distance from this mean point to to the given point so all these yellow points will have a very small distance from this point all these green points will have a larger distance so if i construct a new feature called radius feature which is distance of the points from this from this point which is the mean of both my uh, both my yellow points and green points this is the case of concentric circles right how do we try again this is something that we've discussed in the course videos when we discussed about logistic regression and how we can use logistic regression when we have concentric circles case right so if i transform these features my data is very good i mean here this 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 radius feature itself is a good linear discriminant because it is able to separate both my yellow and green points so if you have a case like this it is best to use some of these strategies because official linear discriminant is fundamentally flawed when you have mu1 and mu2 being the same because when you have mu1 mu2 as same mu1 dash and mu2 dash will also be same so this whole optimization problem cannot be solved because this is anyway zero whatever you do you can't do better than that right and you are stuck there so your only option is to use some of the again there are other strategies also there is something called as kernel fisher discriminant analysis etc but these are simpler and easy to do easy to easy to perform strategies or easy to perform easy to apply strategies to get out of this problem